Reggaeville family, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Take Me Places. My guest on this one has spent almost six decades of his life dedicated, participating, being an active part, witnessing Jamaican music history from his teenage years already. A man who has worked with prolific producers such as Duke, Joe Gibbs, Coxon, a man who has been uh, touring the world for more than 20 years with Dennis Brown and has shared the international stages and the studios with fellow giants like Sly Dunbar, uh, Dean Fraser, Earl Chinna Smith, just to name a few. Here with me is the great and wonderful Lloyd Parks, singer, eventually guitarist, and the bass wizard. <laughs> Thank you. How is everything, sir? I'm, I'm good, you know. Give God thanks, first of all. I forgive the creator thanks, you know for preserving me, that I could be here today talking to you and the world. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing so. Yeah. Where did it take me? Where are we? And why did you invite me to this particular place? I'm in um, New Kingston in Jamaica and um, I think this is appropriate for us to do the interview right here. Right here because this is your personal musical hub, right? Definitely so. My home. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So this is also where you practice, where you rehearse, no, where you... No, no, no. I, I, I just um, store a lot of my instruments here oh, okay. for the time being. Presently, I'm building a storeroom and slide for, for all these equipment around here. But I, I do rehearsal at various rehearsal studios. Okay. You know, occasionally, mm -hmm. special occasion, we do some rent uh, rehearsal studios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Kingston, this very city, this is where you were born also, right? In 1949? Yeah. Tell me a bit about uh, life in Kingston in the 1950s. How was your childhood like? Your dad, he had a restaurant in Crossroads, right? How was that like? Yes, you know, um, it was really, you, you, you call it history, you know, because, um, yeah, my dad used to own a restaurant in um, Crossroads. Um, them call, those is them call it cool supper shop, you know? So okay. dumpling and fritters and, it's a, so when people go to the midnight um, show at Carib Theater, mm -hmm. they would come, so we, my father opened the restaurant very late to accommodate these people. Oh, okay. But I was um, 13 years old, 13 and, you know, and um, used to play of music, you know, like oh, you'd have the, the um, sound system box at, at, at the, the record shops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He used to have it at his restaurant. Oh, okay. So that was a part of it. It would draw me closer to liking music. Mm -hmm. And then we used to play all this long time, old time music and thing. And from there, that's where I started. And then, as, as I mentioned before in the interview, that uh, my uncle had, had a Calypso band. Right. <laughs> you right. know? And I used to go around with him just to get the opportunity to sing a little one song, a little okay. Monty Morris, a little Derek Morgan. And, you know? But I really liked music from those days, you know, way back. So how old were you when you went around with your uncle and his Calypso band? Was I like, I think I was uh, between 17 and 18 years old. Because okay. mm -hmm. okay. I'm recently, I mean, after that, I went to Studio One. Right. You know, so I catch my little practice with my uncle and thing, you know. Okay. And then afterward, I um, joined up with this guy, Wentworth Fernand. Mm -hmm. The group was called the Termites. Yeah. 
As I said in a lot of interviews, I didn't really like that name, but yeah. I really wanted to sing uh -huh. so badly that uh -huh. I said, boy, you know something, let's go with it. So my partner said, we well, you not know, like the name. You have a group named the Beatles, and they make it, so we named the Termites. We will yeah, make it. Make it. <laughs> anyway, you run with it, and it works, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but apparently music have, has had this fascination um, to you since you, you saw uh, or you heard the music at your dad's restaurant. Mm. What was it that drew, drew your attention to it? Was it the recognition being on stage or was it really the, the actual music or why? What was the fascinating thing to you? Everything. Everything. Because, I mean, hearing the music and wanting to be like, there was a singer called Lloyd Price. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, Lloyd Price, Lloyd Parks, mm -hmm. you know? Mm, and so, so it's, a, it's a combination of things who draw, draw me, you know, the sound of music and, you know, and all of that. So, history. <laughs> when you were 17, 18, around that time, that was 1966, that was when Jamaica got its independence. That was also a time when, when you've been to country, you lived in country for a while in Portland and you returned to Kingston. Yeah. How, right. tell me a bit about that time. All right, um, when I was 13 years old, 13, between 13 and 14, I went to um, Portland, Portland to, to live with some relatives. At that time, my father migrated to England. Okay. And my mother was already living in London, so we just, and uh, it was rough there, but it was still an experience, mm -hmm. you know, because I learned to be strong, and so forth. And I came back home. Unfortunately, I have to run away from these people and come back to Kingston mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the age of 17. So you actively left them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's the time now I started to um, get more involved in the music, what I like. Because I was an artist and I could look at you and draw you. Know. Mm -hmm. nice, but nice. Um, it's something that um, music. <laughs> Music was your favorite. Favorite, you know, and then we went to studio one and we recorded the song Have Mercy, Mr. Percy, and it was on the top ten. And we said, Dad, say, hey, you guys, you can do an album. The album was called Do the Rock Steady. And that this, this album is still like, it's like a masterpiece. It's still on the market, you know. And different changes. We broke up from the termites. Mm -hmm. Started to go solo for a while, join the techniques, back from the techniques, back to solo. Start to um, play, you know, like I start to gravitate more to instrument now, you know, and, and, and put the singing and a little pause for a while and thing. And as I said, um, you know, Slide on by, I really have to mention him because um, right, right. we were we started as youth. <laughs> you lived in the same community because yeah, when you came back to town, you were living in Waterhouse also, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. So when did you first meet? Do you recall the first ever meeting? With? With Slide? Um, because we were living in the same neighborhood and um, I had my, I was like the man with the guitar, you know. Okay. He was the man who could play the guitar, so um, Sly used to beat your sister pale for drums <laughs> and i would go with my guitar and and a friend of us i, I, I had a um, tape recorder mm -hmm. and we used to tape it and when we listen to said, but this song sound real man mm -hmm. and i slice it you know say i want to be like motor drummer you know i go and be like motor one drummer you know and i said yeah man i want to be like lynn tate the guitarist you know <laughs> and then you know we we really, we practice and we practice and every day we go and we practice and so forth. And incidentally, the first record we play on was a million seller, you know, with double barrel with uh -huh. Anse Ans Collins, you know. Yeah, right. And from that, I say, you know something, we have a musical future ahead of us. Uh -huh. And we never look back. Uh -huh. And we just go from strength to strength. And played on thousands of records right. you know and you mentioned coxon right he was the first one that recorded you as a singer with the termites yeah. what do you think i always say he was the first one you know but we record a song called we gonna make it mm -hmm. 
on the merit to one label. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And I always can I always leave just ne can't remember that the first song, oh, and then we went down to Coxon. Right. So how was working at Coxon, and and what were were those influential moments, the first times in the studio and so forth? What what impact did that have on you? Why well, I was so excited because um, <laughs> Coxon, or what they used to like have sessions every Thursday. And then audition the same day. Mm -hmm. The first time I went for audition, Coxon that is a man that he knows music mm -hmm. and he knows when he when he hear a hit song, him know it. Mm -hmm. So him say yes. Him call it back by the Jackson. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. him Jackson. <laughs> well, it sound good, you know. But go and go listen to your radio. Mm -hmm. Meaning Learn what is happening, what, learn what people are singing about. Them time they realize I sing about Rude Boy come from jail, Rude get bail. Mm -hmm. Gail as I sing Lady with the Red Dress on, Alton I sing Dance Crash and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I said, go on mute and listen. When we come back, we come back with a song. Have mercy, Mr. Purse. He say yes. Go in at the studio. Right away. Right away. Mm -hmm. And then record that song, and I was so excited, you know. We had months to hear it play on the radio, because it took long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I put it out and it play on the radio. How did that make you feel in the very moment you heard it? I, I couldn't even eat. <laughs> Honestly, my dinner was there, and I said, no, man, and I just... And everybody started to say, boy, I hear a tune from the radio, man. And, oh, man, it was such a wonderful feeling. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I give thanks to Cox and Dad, you know. I mean, no respect to him, him so rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from the money that you got from the ver first album, Do the Rock Steady, 1967, from that money, you bought your first guitar, yeah. right? Let me say, not that, not from the album, but from the first recording. Okay. Have mercy was a person. Mr. Dad said, Jackson, a seven pound we piano. And we use that money to buy the guitar. Yeah. I mean, but some, you must have been pretty determined to know, all right, I want to learn an instrument. This is the instrument I want to learn, you know, yeah, yeah. because others might spend it on a car or whatever, some no, guitar. fancy guitar. guitar. And, you know, a lot of people, I have to give um, credit to um, Wentward for a night, because he was the one who taught me the first three chords on the guitar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And I said, no, man. Sky's the limit. I mean, mm -hmm. just improve, practice, mm -hmm. fly past him. Mm -hmm. But he was my teacher. But how did you practice? You just sit down and try a thing and try your next no. chord and... No, you have... I mean, first of all, that influence. I mean, you know you can play three chords on a guitar. Mm -hmm. I say, yes. Well, I, I would call that the basic. So because of that, now I said, I buy my little books and learn chords, eh? mm -hmm. and then we just improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I just see you where I could have taught um, Ranchy McLean mm -hmm. the guitar. Mm -hmm. You taught him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, somebody teach me something so I can continue to do the same thing for someone right, else. Right. And that was a good feeling because he played on songs like um, The Right Time, I Need a Roof of Mercy, Mighty Diamond Songs. And, you know, another bridge in my mind from Waterhouse, <laughs> Ranchi McLean. May him soul rest in peace. Yeah, and Ranchi was also someone you played with for The Invincible, which was a yeah. subsequent band that you participated in, right? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, we did a little time in the, in the, and then, um, we, 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 I, I started to play with, um, a band called the Thoroughbreds at a yes. club named Miss Tables. Yeah. And then I leave that and go join Skin, Flesh and Bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were made a song named Here I Am Baby. Mm -hmm. Big it, massive it in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we went on tour, we took us on tour. It was so big all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. And that band was um, Tarzan and Keyboard. Mm -hmm. 
his real name is Errol Nelson. Then you have slide on bar and drum, Ranch McLean and guitar, Lloyd Parks and bass. Mm -hmm. Al Brown was a vocal. Mm -hmm. And that song went, um, it was a massive seller, you know, all over the place. So who came up with the name Skin, Flesh and Bones? <laughs> it's bet it be that was between Sly and Ranchy. Okay. Mm. But why did they pick it? Because maybe they used to, um, uh, um, I think they the um, um, Earth, Wind and Fire. Okay. <laughs> Skin yeah, fresh okay. Words, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you also played in other projects and bands with Sly also, also with Ansel Collins. What did you have, you know, um, the revolution is was a spring off from um, Skin for and Bones mm -hmm. because we're the same set of guys when yeah. the channel one and then while I started there the revolution and Ranch switched and started playing bass. You know? And I and I said, all right, I form a weedy people band. Mm -hmm. But we always play in the studio together. Mm -hmm. Because um when you talk about Joe Gibson the professionals. Right, because Joe Gibson the professionals was also the same set of man, right? Yeah. So in other words, myself and Sly, um, Bobla, Bo P, and was like the, and Willie Lindo, uh -huh. it's like the studio musician for Joe Gibbs Studio. Mm -hmm. Sly and Ranchi and some different guys as a revolutionist. But oh, okay. we start from inception, I was a part of the revolutionist. Mm -hmm. So it was like, um, when I played at Roger Tam last year, it was like a re re reunion. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who would you say are the core people? Bobla, you, Sly, mm -hmm. Chinna? That, that is the core set of, of revolutionaries? Yeah, also Bopi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then, you know, occasionally you'd have uh, Marcus and Tammy McCook mm -hmm. do like the orange mm -hmm. with the revolutionaries. So, Revolution is, wasn't really an uh, active band on the street to, to do live performances. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was so exciting at that time, right at time last year. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like um, recent history. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah. Taking the studio band, the historical studio band, right. finally to the stage. Tell me a bit about those days back then. How was a random day in the studio like at Channel One? Or also, um, f as the professionals for Joe Gibbs, how were those vibes like them time back then? Trust me, those were really good days. When, I mean, we were working to survive, mm -hmm. but but the main thing is just to play the music. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it comes out so genuine, authentic, mm -hmm. because it was in the money thing. We, it was just a part of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just displaying the emotions, we put everything in the music. Mm -hmm. And we have a set of guys, you know, when we go to the studio, if we have a session at like um, midday, mm -hmm. we have one hour before, mm -hmm. and we're making fun, and I'm teasing this guy, he's teasing me and all kind, and we just laugh, and then when we go into the studio, that together, the love and the vibe, so it makes the music, just music, real music, wow. you know, no hold back, you know? That was really, it was really exciting, man, those days, you know? And then sometimes, even if we're not recording, we just hang out at the studio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And that only goes to show how much we just like to be around each other mm -hmm. as musicians, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you would be at the studio or working, making music like seven days a week? Um, no. no. But once upon a time, though, in the early days, every day we go to studio. Mm -hmm. We go, um, this, this was even before um, Revolution, yes. Mm -hmm. We go Federal, mm -hmm. we go Dynamic Sound, mm -hmm. we go Duke Reed Studio. Mm -hmm. Cause we were so much in, in demand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, when you talk about um, studio recording, I was the man, you know, and I, I even introduced Sly mm -hmm. to a lot of promoters like um, Prince Tony. You know that um, URI album? Um, it's called, um, it, it, it was done for um, 
Prince Tony. Mm-hmm. And I think um, Big Youth did, did an album, mm-hmm. and, and you or I did one. And it was actually Skin for Shambones playing on his album. Mm-hmm. I think Babylon, some Babylon thing. Mm-hmm. It, it have, um, you'd have, I remember the, the name of them, but um, yeah. I was a man, you know, who, who brought most of these guys into the, being a studio musicians, you know. But I mean, we're talking now about you playing the bass, right? And that started at one particular night at Stables, Art, Art it for Tats? No, it was Stables. Stables, right. I, so the bass player never show up. <laughs> and you just said, okay, I can just, do it. You know everything. So I'm just confirming. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Boy, no. You, you really, forgive me. Because you, I mean, you studied history. how you know that you can actually do it? Right. You ever touch a bass before that? No. Yeah, what happens now? Um, the bass player... I had to migrate to the United States. The band thought that the bass player would be there um, that night. But some emergency in the mafia, and he couldn't, he couldn't come. His name was Tony Ramsey. Nice bass player. And uh, I said to the band leader, the band leader was Mr. Bobby Akins. Oh, okay. His brother was Laurel Akins. No, I, I, I said, I can't play it, you know. I was about 20, 20 little. He said, you sure, you? I said, yeah, man. He said, you? I said to him, say, the guitar has six string and the bass only has four string. <laughs> and trust me, you know, I'm humbly saying that um, when I took up the bass tonight, I started to play and I said, crowd started to gather around the stage. You know, <laughs> seriously. And I just never stopped playing bass after that night. You know? So you always had, uh, you, you always liked the bass? Yeah. Or, or uh, what, guitar. What, guitar. what was the motivation? I just love guitar. Because okay. I, I used to play guitar before. Okay. And after that night, I just get to love the bass, especially oh, bass. Okay. So I, I kind of, being a guitarist, switching to bass, I developed a style, a unique style. Mm-hmm. As everybody gravitated to that style. Because when I play, if you listen, here I am, baby. Mm-hmm. And everyone said, who play the bass? He mm-hmm. play the bass like guitar. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. and then that song now sold so much in Jamaica that um, federal studio called me. Because mm-hmm. everybody started to say, who the bass player? Mm-hmm. Start to play. The first song I did there was um, for federal was um, Fire Burning mm-hmm. with Bob Andy. Then I did some festival song like play the music thing I stood. And then we did era um uh, everything I own, it can move. That is another million seller. Mm-hmm. And then the name started to spread all over England. It's when I in, went to England they started to call me the bass wizard. Mm-hmm. I said, From the bass, the bass wizard. Because yeah. I didn't give name myself like this. Mm-hmm. When I went to England, you know, oh, okay. with Sly. Ansi Collins and um, the Mighty Diamonds and um, we went on a tour in England, you know, mm-hmm. and so forth. But um, I never stopped playing the bass after that night. Mm-hmm. And you just taught it yourself? Are you practice? Are you watch other bass players? Or? I, I, I was a self-taught musician. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the same time, I was inspired by um, James Jefferson. The Motown bass player, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that bass player, fantastic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was motivated by, you know, oh, okay. listening to him and say, yes, that's my style, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But having a own particular style, you think that's crucial in the business to set yourself apart from others? Repeat. To have your own personal style, you know? Is that, you think that's crucial for a musician to set yourself apart from others? All right. When you have your own style, it means that you're creative, mm-hmm. innovative, um, um, people, all right, I, I'm, I'm a, I, I would do play a bass and, and a promoter call another guy and say, play lead park style, man. Mm-hmm. So I find it very important that you, you, you're very creative and have your own style and it works for you, mm-hmm. you know. So, 
I find it just a good a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned Joe Gibbs, right? Yeah. Uh, before that, before that, let me get back to the stables place one more time because I think you you played there a lot. Like this was the first place you played the bass. Tell me a bit. How was that place like? What was going on there? Like right. how were the vibes and right. stuff? Um, that, that this and tit for tats. That was the same kind of spot. Or? Yeah, but the difference with Tit for Tat and Stable now. Um, stable had what you call go go dances. Okay. But not the outrageous go go dancer. It's more like creative and the. More civilized. <laughs> yeah, at the time, you know? Yeah. So, and it was also a restaurant okay. in the day uh-huh. and in the night, it's a club and people drink and eat. Okay. So that, and then you have the live band we play like from Wednesday to Sunday. Okay. And people dance. It was, you know, we, we play and we play different musical, different genres of music and people dance, you know. And then the same thing was happening at Tit for Tat, but Tit, tit, tit for Tat didn't have the go-go, okay, go-go dancing, okay. you know, so. So you would play at Stables every night from Wednesday to Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we always look, used to look forward to that, you know. Okay. And those were joyous nights and that was fun playing? Fun, fun, fun. Because as you say, you know, um... When we were younger, coming up, it was not about the money. Mm-hmm. And that is why the music sound like that. The long time, long time music sound like the real thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we used to enjoy um, these moments, you know, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as part of the professionals, you played a l- for Joe Gibbs. How do you recall Joe Gibbs? How was the relationship with him like? And how was the whole professionals thing the only thing that i would say that i would disagree with the joe gibbs is that um when he says joe gibbs and the professionals mm-hmm. when we're recording joe gibbs is not there mm-hmm. right the musicians we are the one who mm-hmm. produce the record mm-hmm. create everything Creates with the help well errol thompson mm-hmm. he was he was a partner with joe gibbs so he would be all he's an engineer very good engineer mm-hmm. And he was the one who, if it would be better if he said, um, Errol and, and the professional. Oh, okay. Because okay. Joe Gibbs was always in the record store downtown. In the night, he come and listen what we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things I disagree with, you know, mm-hmm. because um, it was really our creativity mm-hmm. that make all the hit songs for mm-hmm. Joe Gibbs, you know. Mm-hmm. But the business was as such yeah. in those days. Mm-hmm. So the producers would be the business people taking care of the financial aspects of yeah. things and the musicians and the engineer would actually be the people on the ground creating yeah. everything. You know, so I was, I was, I, the title I'd give these people is that executive producer, right, you right, spend. Right. Yeah. But we are the real producers, man, the musicians in Jamaica, mm-hmm. trust me. Yeah. Would Joe Gibbs still say, um, all right, let's do a song a love song or this type of song or would produce a duet or would he have a say in any creative aspect of the thing or that was all up to you guys? No, when it come on, comes on to, and, and they do the audition and then listen and say, okay, we're going to record this guy and thing and thing. But mm-hmm. while we're doing the record, he's, he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. So just like that. Yeah. At Joe Gibbs, you met Dennis Brown, right? How did you get to know Dennis Brown? Dennis Brown, I'm trying to figure it out now. Um, it was before. Okay. It was before Joe Gibbs because when we went on the tour, when we did um, Area and Baby, mm-hmm. and it got big all over the place, the, the first tour was in England with um, Toots and the Metal, Dennis Brown, Cynthia Richards, and um, somebody else. And then it came, came over so well, and Dennis Brown, I could say, my lady, yeah. So when, when, and, and then he started working, pr- um, singing for Joe Gibbs. Mm-hmm. And then automatically I find myself a Joe Gibbs student. Oh, okay. So the magic started now, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then he said, boy, lady, now nah, leave, you know, you're like my credit card, you know, you don't going to wear it out. <laughs> wow, that's sweet. Yeah, but really work together well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like, as Dennis Brown said, it's magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we get together and go on the road, like magic. Mm-hmm. 
So he came to you and he said to you, Lloyd put together a band for me that no, or? no it's not that you know, it's just that um we the people band was formed mm -hmm. and automatically we do one and two shows together mm -hmm. and then we realize that it worked it's worked together. So mm -hmm. we the people was like Dennis Brown band, you know. Yeah, man. Okay. yeah. So it, it just turned out to be that way. So it was a whole natural vibration yeah. because you had vibes together and exactly. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. So that was an important aspect to Dennis to have people around him where he can, where he would maybe even call friends. Yeah, because I'll tell you something. As he's a musical director, mm -hmm. I select his song for him. Mm -hmm. I put the arrangement together mm -hmm. and the syncopation into the reggae and thing. And, mm -hmm. and he loved that, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, boy, I can <laughs> and I leave you not like it. Mm -hmm. So that is what um, drive us that we worked together for so many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything that you would say, him would do it? Um, sometimes I say, Dennis, you have to sing the tune then him so skip off. <laughs> and I'm gone. He's like the selector now, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just sneak in the local one tune I'm never want one. And the people say, hey and he must look around and say, Yes, my big brother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, we, we had fun, and you know, it was a good um, combination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even before that, when you mentioned the first tour in the UK and, and those things, and I mean, I, I can feel the enthusiasm you had about the music. How was that like for a youth from, from Waterhouse uh, traveling with his friends, playing music all over the world? It's such a great feeling. Sometimes when I talk to my brother in Sly, I say, lady, sometimes I sit down and I actually cry, you know. Mm -hmm. I say, the same thing happened to me sometimes, you know, because um, we didn't know that we would have reached so far, you know. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we would know that we, we would have been so creative mm -hmm. that the, we can do things that the world acknowledge. And, mm -hmm. and so it's a wonderful feeling, mm -hmm. definitely a wonderful feeling. How many years did you tour with Dennis? More than 20, right? No, it's about, it was about um, 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you've been all over the place, right? Japan, Australia, everywhere? Well, I never go to uh, um, um, Australia with, oh. with Dennis, but I went with Styler at the time. Oh. I was just fitting in, but I went all over the place with Dennis Brown, mm -hmm. everywhere. One place I didn't go with Dennis Brown was Africa, and oh, okay. it was my choice. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, we really enjoy the journey and been all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At several bands that you played, you played with your friend from Waterhouse, Sly. And some producers always ask, in particular, for you and Sly to come play, right? I think Joe Gibbs always say, yeah. Lloyd and Sly, Lloyd and Sly. Uh, so Tell me a bit about the chemistry that the two of you had and what made it so special. Was it the friendship that you shared or the history? Or what was it? We, Sly understands what it takes to make a band tight. Mm -hmm. Luck, I understand the same thing. Sometimes we talk about it, you know, even recently. Mm -hmm. There's a thing when, when we're recording, in other words, there's a particular song where we did at Joe Gibbs, and when we were recording it from Inception, Sly wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, dun, 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 dun. how could I leave? Mm -hmm. The rhythm was just ordinary. Mm -hmm. When Sly comes in and put in the drum, mm -hmm. he said, Lady, I listen to the catch, I listen where you play it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and when he play, it, it just lift up the whole tune. Mm -hmm. But remember, you know, I was like his coach mm -hmm. in the early days. Mm -hmm. So we understand if, if, if Sly play a drum pattern and I was a dub on a bass, I know exactly what to do. And it works, mm -hmm. make tight. Mm -hmm. So that chemistry was really great, mm -hmm. you know? So we enhance each other mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. But also for We The People Band with, with um, Devin Richardson, right? So you played with him for two decades. Did you have a similar chemistry, a similar vibration? Devin Richardson, a fantastic, outstanding drummer. 
place anything. And he also used to admire Sly down by. We always talk about Sly. Mm -hmm. But um, he's such a wonderful um, human, you know. Mm -hmm. Discipline, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. mentally, physically. He's just a great person. Mm -hmm. And then he was my drummer from beginning. Mm -hmm. But he, he decided to take a turn mm -hmm. in the Christian world. And, mm -hmm. and that is why um, we, we part. But um, he's a good drummer. And I mean, now he's teaching the youth at Edna, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's teaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know all these things. <laughs> My husband is a drummer too, so you know, you know from Edna, you know him from Edna. Okay. <laughs> he lives in Jamaica. Your no. husband? Oh, no, we live in Germany. <laughs> no, I know you live in Germany. Mm. Okay. He had even attended his class classes. You know? Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Devon Richardson credit. And um, I mean, even all today, to this day, you're still recording with Sly. Last year you played with Sly and Bobla and China and Lenky for as as the revolutionaries again. Mm -hmm. How is that like still being in the studio together and now even all touring together again? Wonderful feeling. It's another part of history again, you know. Mm -hmm. And another part of the journey, mm. and it's, it's really a wonderful feeling. Mm. And I just keep on doing it over and over. Mm. So when we get together, even when we last year was at Ratatam, we said, Boy, I, I can't believe this lady. I mean, we just back together, you know, and it was a great feeling. Mm. You, know? mm -hmm. you also have your own label, right? Parks. What, what motivated? to do you to do that? i tell you something, you know. Ansel Collins mm -hmm. was the first musician who uh, created his own label. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, uh, I mean, you learn from each other, you know, and I mm -hmm. say, this is really a nice thing to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And i tell you something, maybe some of my songs will be bigger, you know. But because I was such a, a young independent producer, mm -hmm. and that is why um, my songs you now is like some like underground songs that creep upon people now, you know, mm -hmm. because even like mafia and all them songs mm -hmm. get big. Because and but slaving, great song, but <laughs> it, it was recorded um, in those years when we used to struggle as independent producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if these songs on big label, man, you don't go. You know, but um, Ansel Collins was a man, man, I see him. Yeah, we can do it. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we label. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even Double Barrel was recorded. It was Ansel Collins, you know, and then he gave it the techniques to release. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it be become a um, million seller again. But it's a different story. Mm -hmm. But so independence and the whole business aspect of music that was always something that you were interested in as well, aside from actually playing instrument and singing. Yeah, because I had I had my record store in Crossroads, you know. Okay. Actually, right where my, my dad restaurant used to be, right beside I end up. <laughs> that is coincidence. Just coincidence. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you know. So a lot of memories, you know. And what, what did your father say, or what did your parents say when you told them, I'm going to do music now? He wanted they to. were in England, right, when you started that yeah, whole exactly. process. And, and in fact, uh, my father used to send money for me to go to Jamaica School of Art and Craft, because oh, I just said he was a good yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah. And then one day I said, no, sir. And I just said, no, music daddy. And I said, all right. Okay. And then... When I end up going to England, it's right. like, because of music, it's like, um, you, you know what happened? My father started to learn piano. Really? <laughs> At really? 60 years, years, years wow. old, trying to do music. Like, um, I was in, he was inspired by me, you know. Wow. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, because I said, Daddy, Dad, 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 this year, really, music, I'm saying, yes. Mm -hmm. So your parents were living in England and the first time that you got to see them over there was when you were touring over oh, there. Yeah. So 
they they left their son and the next time them see him as a star. <laughs> <laughs> they were really excited. Yeah. It was a um, fantastic moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my mom and wow. Yes. And your mom you had a you had a very close relationship to, with your mom? Yeah, even though um she left us when, when I was like maybe seven years old. Mm -hmm. But I love my mom, you know, and um, when people say you're great, mm -hmm. I say, I, I said to them that great tree produces great fruits. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I give the credit to my mom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the time. All the love is for your mom. She passed um, December 14, mm -hmm. 2021. Mm -hmm. She was 92. Yeah, man, sincere condolences. What you wrote about her on on the social media, that was so, that was so much love. You could feel so much love. Yeah, it was really touching. When it happened, when I heard, I couldn't lay down. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand up. I, I just went on my knee crying, you know. But that's, that's how the journey is a part of life, you know. Journey, yeah, yeah. But she saw you, she saw your music, she saw your success, Everything. and she was always m so joyous about it, yeah. right? Because I say, a song say, I was living in a whole ragged town. My mama wasn't rich, my daddy was poor, I couldn't take no more. My little sister, Patsy, she cried every day. She said, Lordy, remember, remember what the mama used to say. We'll get over it. And when I played that song for my mom, she cried. Yes, I can imagine. And that was really autobiographic, right? Yeah, man, it's, 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 it's real. I was just inspired to do that song because of the whole, what we've been through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. My mom, rest in peace. Love mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Even happier to see that you're still continuing the works, you know, yeah. that you are still working and did you are again now working um with the revolutionaries again so what can your fans expect will they hopefully see you live again also will they hear some recordings because i think sly told me that you guys recorded stuff already yeah, even yeah. last year already yeah we did some stuff but um it's it's, it's so funny you know i i I'm, they say um in the end in the beginning in the end I just felt the need now to go back, mm -hmm. focus on the, um, my vocal career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. The show that I did last Saturday was, people say, book me as an artist just to sing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing any playing. Mm -hmm. I just play one song like a mafia, mm -hmm. but um, I sing with the band and a band called um, School Band. Okay. And it came over well. So um, the focus right now, vocal okay when did you make that decision and what motivated that because um i realized that the voice maybe because i wasn't using the voice um a lot it's still there and i uh, uh, and people say you have a sweet falsetto it's so long i have been a musician Oh, it's been a long, long time, you know. And the voice is still there. I said, "Man, when I do dub plate, I said, no, man, I do for record." And I say, "All right, all right, all right." So I love to hear that, man, because I love yeah. your voice yeah, from thank you. from mm -hmm. way back. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, I so people can book me for shows, book me for reggae jam, book me for any show, right? Okay. I will come and i will sing you know Sweet, this is what i want to do now final wrap up you know yeah. but i'm not going to put on my bass you know remember that because I'll, I'll record i'll occasionally i'll do a live concert but vocal lloyd parks a singer right now and who's playing in 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 the band then right now well, no, I still have the band, you know, Bubbler, Rabbling sometimes, and um, 
Samaru, and um, Everton Gill, mm-hmm. and the whole works. Mm-hmm. Gibby and guitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, I just um, do, a, do a, a, a song for Gibby that he produces. Mm-hmm. Very nice song. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm ah, still active. Thank God for that. Yeah, still yeah, active. Yeah, yeah, man, of course, of course. That I know. But super happy to hear that we're going to hear your voice more often now yeah, again. Yeah. So on stage and on record, right? On stage and okay. on record. Uh, Light parks, ready for the world again, vocal. Ever ready, ever ready for six decades, man. Yeah, you remember slaving officially, money for jam, we'll get over it, ordinary man, stars, all of these songs. Uh-huh. Back on track. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm super happy to hear that, Lady. So for all of that, all those things ahead of you, I wish you all the very best for that. Thank you so much for inviting me to your space and sharing your wonderful history and your positive vibration. No love and respect, man. All the very best. Always welcome every time. So yeah, man. Big up Reggaeville. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Munch.